And for all of us going to America, going to the United States for the first time, from our wonderful, small, beautiful, green country that we have, uh, we have here, is the size and the magnitude of the United States. And just how many different places you have to go to. Um, and I remember, I remember being one of my, as I said, one of my first jobs at Capitol Records was going on the road with heads, hands and feet in, uh, in 1972. And immediately I, I was staggered that we seemed to be on the road for about 10 days and going to all these different places, you know, Albuquerque, Phoenix, Tucson, Salt Lake City. And I thought, we've barely been anywhere, but it seems to have taken a huge amount of time. And I quickly realized um, that from an artist's point of view, this took a lot of stamina because you were, you were expected, if you turned up in Salt Lake, you were expected to go to local radio stations, you were expected to go to a retail store, you were then expected to do a sound check, you were then expected to go on stage and give the performance of your life, and then you were expected to go back to your hotel room, get up the next day, catch the flight, catch the bus to wherever the next place was. Uh, and doing that every day, that, that took a lot of doing. Um, so I was, and I was pleased I'd had that initial experience because it always helped me to understand just the, uh, the, the, the amount of commitment as an artist that you would have to put into this, this, this trying to succeed in the United States. And, and uh, it, it, for some it was okay, for others it proved too difficult, um, and for others it was their downfall. We, um, we had status quo signed to Capitol Records at one time. And status quo were always considered to be one of those English bands that had been on a couple of labels in the United States but had never really broken through. And everybody couldn't quite understand. They haven't broken through. Why haven't they broken through? Because their sort of blues rock, you know, go for it was perfect. Um, and I remember... Um, They'd come over and they'd, um, and they were huge, huge in UK and in Europe, huge. So they come over and the first gig would be the whiskey in Los Angeles. And they'd sort of say, well, uh, it's a bit of all right. It's a little winky dink club. Um, all right, fine. And I remember that, um, I remember the, uh, the manager was a man called Colin Johnson, who was a wonderful character and after after they'd been on the road for about three weeks he calls me up and he says um we've had enough we've had enough i said well, where are you and he says oh i'm not i'm not sure i think where are we oh i think we're in nashville or memphis he said uh, they've had enough they're going home rupert i said what do you mean don't no 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 don't no you can't go home no no we can't do this any longer he says they're sick to death of playing the opening slot on somebody's tour and I'm going to play some club because they weren't. He said, we're used to playing these big arenas. He said, we play all these big stadiums. And he said, and we're losing money. We're not, you know, every, while we're here in America, trying to break America, we're not making any money. You know, thank you. You're supporting us. You're trying to help us. He said, appreciate all of that. But he said, no, we're done. We're going home. And that was it. And so therefore... It was, it's interesting that they, they never ever broke America, never broke America. 